And welcome to TVC News at 7. We begin in the House of Representatives, where heads of some of the newly constituted standing committees have pledged commitment to their responsibilities. The group of lawmakers under the banner of like minds dispelled rumors of rancor in the aftermath of Thursday's unveiling of big faces behind the standing committees by the Speaker. National Assembly correspondent Jokia Dissa reports. Thursday's unveiling of 134 standing committees to run the oversight functions of the House in the next four years is still a topic for discussion. The inauguration of the committees by Speaker Tajuddin Abbas ended weeks of speculations and anxiety. The Speaker dispersed the notion of juicy committees, insisting no committee is more important than the other. With mind-boggling allegations of bribery and corruption leveled against some committees in the past parliaments, these committees assure Nigerians they will make the needed difference. We should stop reading meaning into the actions of the leadership and see the good side. The most important thing is that we have a leadership that have included everybody. You have a leadership that made a selection based on competence, based on capacity, based on geographical interest, based on inclusion. They also commended the speaker and his deputy for the even distribution of positions across political parties. And we are so glad, and the Ten Assembly is so glad for this kind uh, of uh, uh, style of leadership. Everybody is happy. Elsewhere, newly appointed deputy chairman, House Committee on Power, and son of former information minister Joshua Ghana, says... It is high time government segmented power distribution to enable those in business areas have unfettered access to electricity. He says solar systems can be provided for rural areas as his committee awaits the appointment of the power minister. We need to segment Nigerians' power usage. For the industrial areas, people that want to go into production, base load power at whatever amount it will always be cheaper than you buying generators using diesel or any other form of well gas fired hydroelectric and any other form of power solution will give power at a regulated price that is cost reflected for a long time these lawmakers are convinced the speaker chose right and their words of assurance are that they will not only keep the flag flying but also raise the bar through diligent oversight function in months and years ahead. Joke Edsa, TVC News, Abuja. Still in Abuja, a coalition of civil society groups in northern Nigeria wants the federal government to include civil society in the presidential steering committee in palliative. The group also asked the government to introduce an affordable transport system, alternative means of energy, and review workers' salaries as part of measures to cushion the effect of fuel subsidy removal. Helen Osamade Akins reports. This is not the best of times for most Nigerians with the increase in the cost of living. Just as Nigerians are trying to adjust to the hike of pump price from 195 naira to 514 naira, they were faced yet with another increase. To caution the effect of the subsidy remover, the federal government set up a committee to work out palliatives. But this network is worried that common Nigerians who are not members of the Nigerian Labour Congress are not represented in the committee. They want the government to include civil society in the committee to represent the interests of other Nigerians. The presidential committee only has the representative of the Nigerian Labour Congress. And Nigerian Labour Congress is the umbrella organization of Nigerian workers, meaning the common man is not represented in the committee. That is why we are calling on the government to involve a civil society in that committee. Meaning when you have the civil society, the interest of the common one, those percentage you mentioned that are not working, their interest is, pro uh, pr uh, is protected there. That is when we start talking about the farmer, the layman, the artisan, and so on and so forth. They also want the federal government to facilitate a process of ensuring effective and efficient synergy and coordination between the various security agencies for effective fights against insecurity. The networks also call on the federal government to adopt the national policy on protection of civilians as a mark of deliberate action to reduce the likelihood of harm to civilians and civilian infrastructures during all phases of military operations. Helen Osamedei Kings, TVC News, Abuja. 
Now to health stories now, where the United States government has announced the launch of the PMI Evolve, the second phase of its malaria control project in Nigeria. This was announced at the closeout and dissemination meeting of a $7.8 million vector-linked project in Abuja. Our correspondent, Oyo Thomas, has won this. USAID-led United States President Malaria Initiative, PMI, is a project aimed at reducing the malaria burden in the country. Its goal is to reduce malaria death by at least 50% in African countries where this is prevalent. This is the closeout dissemination of the vector link project, the surveillance stage of the PMI project which has helped in data gathering on attitude and susceptibility of mosquitoes. The data generated by the five-year project helped Nigeria's national malaria elimination program make better policy decisions, especially in the distribution of treated nets and right insecticides to use for indoors. PMI Evolve will continue supporting planning, implementing and monitoring of malaria vector control program, including entomological monitoring, insecticide treated mosquito nets, and the lava source management. The project will strengthen the capacity of local institutions, including national malaria program, district health officers, and the research institutions to independently conduct vector control programs. On this same platform, with the support of the USAID, we are also presenting another new project, which is to support the country. Uh, and the new project is the PMI, what we call the PMI Evolve. So I know for our PID, they are like, so is that the end of the road? No. The USAID, together with NMEP, we're st still in the business of controlling malaria in this country. And uh, on behalf of the Federal Ministry of Health, I wish to commend the PMI for taking that initiative and they continue to support us to ensure that our ITN deployment follow the result from the Sentinel uh, site and IRM activities in the country. And in addition to that, the Vector uh, Links project has continued to provide technical support and human resource development to the National Malaria Program, both at the national level and the states. The second phase is built to start on the 1st of August. The United States government emphasized it will continue to remain a partner with Nigeria, not just in the fight against malaria, but other diseases for a robust national development. Moya Thomas, TVC News, Abuja.